Thank you very much, um, ladies and gentlemen, honorable members of the press. I wish to thank you for coming to this uh, press briefing. But the most important thing is for me to start by apologizing for starting late. I actually initially we were going to be having this press conference away from this house. We would have wanted ourselves to be where the action is taking place. But I realized that uh, it would be difficult for you in terms of coordination. So I had to go and apologize somewhere where we were supposed to hold our press conference. If that is it, may I wish to tender my, my sincere apology for the late start. And I want to thank you for always bearing with us in these circumstances. This statement is coming as a very important statement, ladies and gentlemen. This is a statement we are making in light of the situation in the country which is debilitating and which is worsening by the day. What is definitely clear is that there is absence of leadership. The nation is open. <coughs> The nation is parentless. And what is necessitated this is obviously the conduct and behavior of Mr. Monangagwa and his team who snatched the victory of the people. Fellow Zimbabwe, let me hasten to say I've taken a lot of time to assess the environment in the country and to have a first-hand account and on-spot assessment and check of our political and humanitarian situation. Over the past few days, I've visited hospitals and clinics. I've visited victims of cholera. I've attended burials of uh, cholera victims. I've also been in queues in the various parts of the country. In fact, just this past weekend, I had to wait for close about four hours in a few of you. We were supposed to be going into the countryside for some other activities. The situation has gotten done. Indeed, our country has been sent on a free fall and also is in a difficult situation on account of the predatory policies of this unelected government. We have realized and witnessed the high and worsening levels of unemployment, deadening poverty and excruciating inequality. The country is experiencing a confidence crisis which is manifesting itself as a liquidity crisis. It is a confidence crisis, not a cash crisis. And this crisis is, act is caused by structural deficiencies and distortions in the economy, typified by deindustrialization, a rising informality, in fact, from the National Labor Force survey of 2014, 94% of our economy is informalized up from 84% in 2011. We have dwindling capital inflows. We also have a galloping and runaway expenditure on the part of government. A government that has a huge appetite to spend money. The chief actor in that being Yidi Munangagwa himself having been gallivanting and globe-trotting, again perpetuating the old Mugabe style of occasionally visiting the country and being out of the country most of the time. Of course, this does not come as a surprise to us. I've always indicated that an illegitimate government is always clueless, and a clueless government is not able to provide solutions. Whoever would say we want to move on are simply cheating themselves. We cannot move on under the circumstances of an illegitimate outcome of the election, which is not what the people want. 
If anything, instead of moving on, we move around. And when we move around, we are then entrapped in this vicious circle of contestation and disputation around the election, around the direction that the country must take. And this is why I must indicate that the biggest problem, which has been the biggest challenge in the country, is the indiscipline at the fiscal level by government. One would wonder what has happened between November and now that we always have almost have about five billion that is spent by government without knowing where it was being taken to. Much more than the money that is allocated to the budget. But not only that, because of this high expenditure tendencies, hyperinflation tendencies on the part of government, we then end up having a situation of uh, a deficit in terms of the budget. Once we have a deficit of budget, we then have a government that is induced into borrowing in order to finance that deficit. And of course, you have seen the scandal around the traffic reviews um, and the scandal around the date that we have a domestic debt. Nowhere across the world would you see the domestic debt being higher than the sovereign debt. And the debt has jumped from about three billion to about nine billion, telling you that there are people who are spending money without any discipline. Let me turn to the economy. I fully understand the pain that Zimbabweans have. I feel it every day. I associate with it every day. I get formed almost on a daily basis with women, men, parents, asking for assistance, asking for the way forward, asking for the answers. I was beginning to wonder why they were calling me. But I then discovered that they only are expecting solutions from the person they voted for. I have no doubt that they would not form Nangagwa because they know that he is not their guy. I am their guy. And on that account, they have every reason to call me. But it's very important for us to understand that the situation around the economy is almost now unbearable. I spoke about the spaghetti words. Munangagwa misunderstood what I was saying and is given spaghetti cues. You are seeing the cues that are snaking around the service stations. Shops are closing down. Our people, you know, have been battling for cooking oil. Where is the sunflower which we used to grow? We can't even feed ourselves. We can't even do the basic of chores and responsibilities. Prices of uh, commodities are growing exponentially. I got calls from civil servants. Some of them struggling even to eke out a living. Those are the challenges that we have in terms of the economy. We also continue to have serious problems with investment. No investor would come to a country where you are being promised that the country is open for business. But what we are seeing is that the country is actually open for craziness. Craziness of raiding people's money, craziness of invading the pockets of the poor, the pockets of those who are in the lower rank of the society. And this economic decay is common to all. It has not just affected the common men on the street, it has affected the pensioners, our elderly, the entrepreneurs, otherwise known as the vendors, our students, both local and abroad, local business people, and our workers who have had to go for months without pay, or even have pay but pay which is not paid. We've also witnessed some developing trends on the political environment. <coughs> State. You have seen that clearly government is at war with the people. And they are being punished for rejecting the government on the 30th of July. When all else ceases, government knows one thing, that they did not win the election. They did not win the mandate of the people. And this is why they have behaved in a very bizarre fashion. Consider the circumstances of the 1st of August. And I hear that there's a commission that has been instituted. Our position is very clear. We have nothing to do with that commission. 
because it has no legitimacy in our context. It was appointed by an illegitimate man. But not only that, Mr. Mnangagwa can't appoint a commission to investigate himself. The executive can't appoint people to investigate themselves. You don't need a commission of inquiry to know who perpetrated the kind of issues that we saw. But we see, and we know that, they are trying to shift blame, point fingers at the imaginary opposition hand. When there was no hand, we don't control instruments of terror, we don't control tools of force that were used on the 1st of August. And we have nothing to do with the circumstances, except that we only associate with those circumstances to commiserate and sympathize with the victims. We have also seen the brutality of the treatment of our ZCTU comrades, particularly President Mutasa and Secretary General Jafet Moyo. You saw what happened to them. You saw how they were harassed. We are back to the old. And of course, in the city center, we continue to have bizarre cases of certain people being shot at. Just recently, I think, crossed by, we actually had a problem of uh, one person who was killed by armed people who are unknown. We seem to have too many people with guns, but that cannot be account accounted for. But you then see that our leaders, leaders of the democratic movement, people like uh, Comrade Jendai Beat, Honorable, Senator Komich, <coughs> and other leaders, Vondo, Epmoch, Ziwa, they have been terrorized and harassed by this government. They committed no offense. They have nothing that they have committed. If anything, they are being punished for being peace-loving and democratic. And again, we are seeing this persecution. And we have said they must drop those charges and focus on the real issues that matter to Zimbabwe. Persecuting one another, vindictiveness, is not going to move this nation forward. We have also seen Zanupiev masquerading as the police to continue to hide behind cholera. They are thanking cholera for helping Zanupia to ban our activities under the guise of cholera being a problem in the country. But yes, soccer matches are continuing, weddings are continuing, Munangago had a graduation ceremony. So this weekend, we have said whether the police indicate that they are not willing to proceed with the, our meeting or not, we we'll have to do everything that is necessary to proceed with that meeting. Meaning to say that we we'll also have to go to court, but of course we have not yet raised a response from them. But if they are going to be intransigent, we can't afford to continue postponing our investment. It has to be on, on the 27th. And we have to take all legal mechanisms, peaceful mechanisms, to make sure that we congregate. And already we are encouraging all the people across the whole country to be part of this process, particularly as we celebrate our 19 years of existence. We've also the emergency situation, which is quite bad. I don't want to belabor you with the points. The situation in the hospital is so shocking. Our hospitals are sick. Now, sick hospitals can't attend to sick people. But those are the challenges we have. Our people are dying from preventable diseases such as cholera, typhoid. This is because of wrong priorities on the part of government. I've told you about the circumstances of the 2% that has been levied onto the people. It is unwarranted. It is raiding the people's money. We want that money to be retained because those transactions are supposed to be reversed and people being given their money back. <coughs> that is what we are insisting on because it suffocates the poor, it's anti poor, it also goes against the banking and inclusive banking that we want to see. So men would say, <coughs> Mr. Chamisa, what are you saying to Zimbabwe? I'm saying to our teachers and our nurses, our doctors, our soldiers, the police, prison service officers, intelligence officers, our drivers, gardeners, cooks, workers in general, the time has come. The time has come for us to reflect on our circumstances and then begin to find common solutions to our common problems. How do we find common solutions to our common problems? We have already said there are concrete steps that must be taken to resolve issues in this country. 
so that we are able to reverse the people's stolen victory and your stolen victory. We are clear about the path and formula that this country must take to extricate itself from the current hardships. We have said the first thing is for this nation to go on a path of a political dialogue. But political dialogue not for purposes of a GNU, but political dialogue for purposes of making sure that we deal with issues that are pertinent to the nation. And we have identified five critical issues that must be dealt with. Those issues are to do with resolving the fundamental issue. And I must say this to the nation. Before the death of President Tsangirai, there was a unanimous agreement with our colleagues from across the political divide in Zanupi, the war veterans, who were discussing with President Tsangirai, Mr. Matema Danda would know this, and Mr. Tsonga would know this, that there was going to be an arrangement of a transitional authority after dealing with the, our common man, Mr. Mugabe. Because we had problems with the big men, both from Zanu PM and from the MDC side. But what then happened is that they reneged on that promise and then chose the path of elections without the transitional authority. So we are saying, as far as we are concerned, to reclaim the victory of the people on the 30th of July and to reverse the coup against the people's will on the 30th of July. Let us go back on a path to legitimacy. And we have identified a five point plan to be dealing with those issues. Number one, let us have a return to legitimacy in this country. How do we return to legitimacy? We return to legitimacy by respecting the voice of the people and the will of the people. People can vote and their vote being disregarded or negated. We want the will of the people to be respected. And that is the discussion point number one. How do we resolve illegitimacy? How do we cure the illegitimacy of the current regime? Number two, we want to undertake comprehensive reforms in this country. Comprehensive electoral reforms, media reforms, political reforms, and also constitutional and legal reforms that are going to usher in a new dispensation, not a promise or a slogan of a new dispensation. We don't want rhetoric. We want deliverables on the comprehensive reforms. Number three is nation building and peace building. For us to be able to achieve this, we need a comprehensive agenda to heal our wounds and to heal the past commissions and omissions in a transparent manner, in a non-vindictive manner, but in a retribute, in a non-retributive manner, rehabilitating people and also restoring them in a big manner. For us to be able to do that, we are not going to accept a top-down approach. It has to be a bottom-up approach involving the citizens and the various community leaders as well as the clergy and the civic society. Number four, we have to have a common approach to international isolation. Mr. Mnangagwa can go to Davos, he can go to China, he can go. Nobody would listen to him. <coughs> when I also go, which I intend to do very soon, I will be saying another tune. Now, that discord does not help the country. We need to have a chorus of the way forward around reforms, around curing the issues of Zidera, and reversing the sanctions that are on the country. But to be able to do that, it requires a common view, a conversation. Was conversations build a nation? Last but not least is the economic situation. We find ourselves in a better situation. Our people are suffering. I know the suffering is affecting mostly people who support the MDC. Because poverty knows no party. Poverty is non party. Poverty attacks both ZANU and the MDC. The stomach does not have a party card. And we need to be able to resolve issues beyond just the partisan approach. As I've also seen that there is a problem of people thinking that, ah, no, Mr. Chamisa wants to be in the inclusive government. Far from it. We need a national transitional authority. That transitional authority is the one that is going to then lay the framework for these steps so that we resolve this crisis. Otherwise, if we don't resolve the crisis, 2023 will be a repetition and a reproduction of the same problem. The problem President Changra left, the problems Mr. Mugabe did not solve, the problems Mr. Mnangagwa would want to perpetuate. We want to put a stop. We can't be talking about elections all the time. We must be focusing on development and economics. But to be able to do that, we must liberate our country from the vicious circle of politics. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to say our country is suffering 
from two critical classes that I'm observing. The first class is the looting class, which is the class of those who are property, who have access to privilege and who are entrusted with position. Then we have the majority of us who are in the looking class, who are just the innocent bystanders who are observing. But the problem with the looking class is that it is suffering the pain because the looting is victimizing the looking class. We need to move from being the looking class and then move into the mode of being the active citizens and active class, providing leadership unto ourselves. And saying to ourselves, none but ourselves in Zimbabwe have the responsibility to liberate our country from the jaws of tyranny. Now, to be able to do that, we have a lot of available platforms, one of which is obviously implementing our constitutional rights in terms of Section 59 of the Constitution, peacefully protesting. I know people are putting a lot of pressure. Please, we want to protest. We want to, we want to do things that are peaceful. We don't want things that are going to be hijacked by certain urgent provocateurs who then come and cause violence, and then it is blamed on the NDC or the alternative movement. We want to do things properly. We give due notices where it is necessary so that we don't operate nicodemously or nocturnally. So we'll do that, and that is coming. What is the immediate answer? The immediate answer, let us abolish the bond. Let us dollarize, have a multi basket of currencies. Stop pretending that the bond and the US dollar are one on one. That's self delusion. You can't bury your head in the sand like an ostrich. Let's face the music. Number two, we need an audit of all the debt, in particular the nine billion debt, the treasury bills, who benefited and where did the money go? So we need an inquiry by parliament so that we know the nature of the debt, even country by country debt, institution by institution, person by person, and account it to the country. I have seen the attempt to try and punish certain people in the Reserve Bank. But there is a presiding officer. The Reserve Bank is a presiding officer. We want to see heads rolling. The presiding officer must suffer. And the presiding officer to the presiding officer, the president, or the one who claims to be the president, must also account. Because you can't have this rot to the extent of about nine billion, and there's no justification way beyond and double the budget, uh, you know, that comes from parliament. And all this odious debt was accrued without the approval of parliament and the law. So we need to be able to deal with this, and to make sure that we have a clear way forward. The two percent tax must be reversed and stopped immediately so that we go on to deal with the issues of retrenching expenditure, which is beyond what is expected. Ladies and gentlemen, let me lastly <coughs> conclude by saying, we are inviting all of you, as we reflect on our journey commemorating the 19 years as a part of Excellence at Guangzhou Stadium on Saturday the 27th. It's going to be a big day. A lot of activities. A lot of you were asking what are the key activities, what are you going to be doing. Come and see for yourself. It's going to be a momentum marker. It will change the course of direction of this nation. And we are ready to lead. We are ready for change. This country cannot possibly be shown direction by the people who have misdirected it. I know how suffering you are. But just know that it's not so long before our reins are back, the people's power is back, and real change is therefore better. The future is in our hands. Thank you, and God bless you. I think I find out more questions, or those who have questions, Mr. Mafume, let us know the question. <coughs> Maybe check two or three. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to find out the transitional approach that you talk about. What form do you want it to take if it's not going to the GMU? And also uh, the progress when you check the initiative. Thank you very much, Mr. Msaka. 
the transitional authority is going to be a creature of the discussion. We do not want to define the contours and parameters of it now because we want a national discourse on that. And we'll agree on the nature of the beast. But we want something that is not going to compromise, particularly the MDC, because we don't want a repeat of 2008, wherein we were then uh, used to chlorinate uh, the infected. We do not want to a repeat of 2008. Once beaten twice, shy, we need to be very clear that the agenda is not about power. The agenda is not about positions. The agenda is about answers to the people of Zimbabwe. And we need permanent answers to resolve the national question, which I have already articulated. Second issue is to do with the church. There is nothing much. The church is yes, where the meeting, we told them what our parameters are. They have not uh, gotten back to us in terms of uh, uh, what they said. We are very clear about the parameters of our debate and discussion. And we are ready to discuss, but we are not ready to be um, forced into some kind of uh, legitimizing the illegitimate. In fact, we will ultimately discuss and resolve our national issues as a country. But there has not been any appetite for Mr. Munangagwa to discuss. He seems to want to discuss with the international community, re not realizing that the local community is more important to discuss with, as much as the international community is also important. Thank you.